Okay, welcome to um, Glorious Summer, month two. This month we are going to be working on these daisy blocks. And these border blocks. I just got done trimming mine. So that we will be able to use a word. Get my hoops. You have a Bernina. You'll be able to use your medium. Um, it's like a rectangly hoop, okay, for the daisy. And then you'll be able to use your maxi hoop or a mega hoop for the border pieces. They'll fit into either of those, the maxi or the mega on that one. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to do my, uh, I have a PowerPoint. So we'll go through that. Um, Try to get to the right screen. There we go. Everybody see the PowerPoint now? Shake your head yes. <laughs> All right. So this is Glorious Summer Month 2, um, brought to you by TFQS. We were working, be working with background fabric number two this month. We'll be making, like I just said, four border pieces that are six by 24 and four daisy pieces that are cut on a six by six piece. We'll be trimming those down to four and a half by um, 22 and a half. No, four and a quarter by 22 and a half, I think. And then these are four and a quarter. And the daisies are four and a quarter. Which is, I didn't ever really realize that four and a quarter was so tricky. I have to remake two of my daisies. <laughs> um, using a stripology to cut out the six by 24 and the six by six makes it really fast and very accurate. Um, I, I do love my stripology rulers. You will also need to put the fusible woven fabric on the back of all your fabric pieces, just like we did before. Like I said, we'll be using the medium hoop for the daisy. You will do your placement line, then you will um, put down your fabric. If you cut it out with a cutting machine, um, you can just stick it down, um, especially if you're using a fuse and fix. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. We had some discussion about that before we started our meeting, but I'll go into that a little bit more. Um, and then you'll do a tack down. And then you'll do your cover stitch, which is right there. Um, the fuse and fix is an OESD product. Um, Pam was telling me about it. It was It's not a new product, but it is a new to me product. Um, this is my first um, time using it. Um, they are saying to use it with designs that have applique. One side is sticky and one side is fusible. The fusible side, when you first feel it, is not sticky. It only is sticky once you heat it onto your fabric. Um, it is easy to stitch through. There is no gunk left on your needle. Um, Steamaseam 2, I notice when I'm stitching with that, I do notice 
you know, like glue globs on my needle and I have to clean my needle every once in a while. So this does not do that. Um, when you get done with your applique, it is not stiff. It does give the applique a little bit of a raised look, so more 3D effect with that. Um, you can print on these sheets. Um, it can be used with a cutting machine. Um, we have been, sounds like we've been having some different um, outcomes with that. So I think that's something we need to look into further. Um, it is easy for with to use with the tack and trim method for sure. Um, I, it sounds like people are having very good results with that. Um, it does take your embroidery to the next level. If you're looking for precision, this is a product that I think you should look into. With the daisy blocks and the um, border blocks, because they're exact, they're all exactly the same. You can save on stabilizer by using this um, patch method. Once you have made a block, you can pull that block away and then adhere another piece of stable stick onto that. You just take the paper off and stick it right to it. You can stick it to the top or the bottom just so the sticky side is up, you know, so your fabric will be placed on the stickiest part so that it does its job. Um, it saves you a lot of time and it's very easy to do. Um, you can, for the border, you can use your maxi or your mega hoop. I love this picture. And you will get some beautiful results this month. And that is the end of our, our PowerPoint. Stop sharing. There we go. Now we're back. Um, let me get us big. So... Yeah, I did have an issue trimming my blocks because sometimes my brain thinks backward and I have to remake two of them because I trimmed too much. So, but, so I'll be doing that later today. <laughs> Any questions on that? And I can show you the fuse and fix. Mm -hmm. I didn't know about the fuse and fix on these blocks that I just did, but I did, did it on my, on this one. And when you feel this, it does feel different. It feels a little bit more raised and it feels soft. It, it has some... Um, give to it and it doesn't move like with my other ones I could feel that fabric shift under there with this you can't feel it shift so I'm going to continue to use it um, the other thing we were talking about and during class is um, when you have something that has this stem stitch on it I would not use the cutting machine. Um, I had issues with it being too small. And then I had to go back in and do a triple stitch around to hold that stitch down. Which, it looks good. You know, I'm not going to remake it. But um, that stem stitch gets so skinny. It's almost like just a line of stitching. And it won't hold down. See how skinny that is right there? That stem stitch gets so thin that it's not really holding anything. I didn't have a problem on my other one when I did the tack and trim method. I didn't have issues. But on this one where I had cut everything out with my cutting machine, I had a problem where there was a stem stitch. 
Um, I put fuse in on. I put fuse and fix on these little hearts. And if I try to pull this off right now, it pulls the glue away. So I found that I had to reheat this if I let it sit. If I used it right away, the glue stayed on the fabric. But otherwise, I found that it came off unless I really work at pulling it away. Now it's off. See how it sticks, and it's it's a lot stickier than um, steam a seam is. It is repositionable on your fabric as well. But other than that, um, this month is a very easy month. So if you haven't started or are a little behind, this is a great time for you to catch up because this one goes very quickly. Um, I think I had it done in two days and they were short days. So pretty easy one for you this month. So now's a great time to ask any questions that you might have. Question me, question me. Do you know how much of that fuse and fix we'll need for the whole project then? I don't. Um, there's 20 sheets in a package on this here i used one full sheet okay on this block so the first month would have been four sheets and you can use every if you're to attack and trim you can use every bit of that because it's like blue substance you can like cannibalize them together you can iron them those little pieces together you know I wouldn't throw any of it away because you can like if you're doing a, a piece of fabric say you can cover that whole fabric with just even small chunks especially if you're doing tack and trim so don't throw any away use it all I think I had a little tiny piece like this left <laughs> out of a whole sheet when I did this Good, I'm cheap, so you know. <laughs> I am. I am the super cheap lady, dog. <laughs> Trust me on that one. I'm like I use um, yeah. I use that method of saving stabilizer all the time. I I always patch if I can patch. We couldn't patch with this one because it's all different. It was all different. Um. But these are exact same. So when you peel them up, you can just patch that hole. Does everybody understand what I mean by patching? Does anybody have questions about that? Um, Connie? No. Connie? It, yes. It's Penny. Yeah, I've got yep. a question. I don't have Hi, my, Penny. Uh, my box yet or whatever for the second month. So I'm kind of on those circles yeah do you use different color pinks on all those circles and do you use different color threads yes, on all those circles all the circles are covered with the same thread but you will use pink one through five one through five yeah so one is on the outside and then two three Four and five is in the middle. Okay. In the middle. And then okay, the okay. red is the heart. Yeah. And then um, this is your blue. Light blue, I think it was called. It has a little tealiness to it. Yours does. Okay. I think I might That's switch pretty. to your guys' blue because then mine will be the same. Yeah, it's just super simple. Or no, you know what? I did change color on these. See, it was a couple weeks ago and I forget. They are all different. They're all different? 
the thread color oh. is all different. Oh. So the your ones are the same, your twos are the same, your threes are okay. the same, your fours are the same, your five is by okay. itself. All right. Connie? I lie. Look at me. <laughs> yes. Connie? What's up? When the when this when for I two questions. Um did you mark the back of your strip like we did for the the blue um the first clocks so you have crosshairs? Do we have to I match did up? Not. I did not. Okay. I just I did fold them. I folded it. Okay. And then I lined it up. Um if you want to be more careful than I am. Um, you can use your um, template on your hoop to center it. Put okay. your fabric in and then set your template on. Okay, that's a good way to center things. Especially if you're new. Okay. And um, I'm a very visual person. Our hoops have centering marks. Yeah. This is a center. This is the center. I can line that up. I can eyeball pretty good. And she does give us wiggle room with this fabric. Okay. Uh, we, we end up cutting like an inch and a half off of both sides. Oh, wow. And that. So, and when you're, when you're trimming this too, I when I was trimming this just now, it's harder to trim these big pieces, right? So what I found is that you end up a half an inch here and a half an inch here. Oh, okay. For your four to get the four and a quarter. Just to okay. FYI if that helps you when you're trimming. The other thing is, I'm just curious, um, how does it sew out? Does it does it go from one end of the strip to the other, or is it gonna bounce around? Like, are you gonna need are they did you remember if it sews like Two of the same circle so that it jumps from one end to the it does these yeah. two it does these two and then it does these two it does oh. like that okay all right great it does it it places it places your fabric all first though all these circles uh-huh because it uses all the same color to place the circles and then you can trim them You'll see it, it, it goes okay. through and it does all the circles and then you go back and you trim them and then you come back and you do your top stitch with the um with the pretty little, little stitching there. Okay. Cool. I just love that stitch. I do too. It's very. Is this session still being recorded? Yep. Okay. Just so everybody can hear the questions. Awesome. Sometimes the best part of it is the questions. Exactly. I used the fuse and fix and remade this block. I got the first part of it done using fuse and fix on all my pieces. And I have no puckering like I have with this one. Okay, let me let me find you, Barb. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to highlight you. Okay. If I can do it. Spotlight. There she is. Okay. So. Okay, Barb. Three blocks for the um, Summer Whimsy, is it called? That's yep. Quilt? Yeah, Summer Whimsy. I have a lot of puckering in between all my embroidery. And I'm not happy with it. So I did the first part of this block using the fabric I bought from you guys yesterday. But using the Fuse and Fix <clears> on <throat> all of my embroidery. And I have zero puck puckering at all. Looks so what great. did you? So what did you do? You how did you use it? You just put it on top of your stabilizer in the hoop, and then put your fabric on top of it. 
Yeah, I, I did exactly. No, you, you you lay it down your your background fabric onto your stable your stable stick in the hoop, and then I just did the pieces. So it's on the back of your project, correct? Fuse and fix is on your pieces. It's on all these pieces. Oh, oh, I got you. I I was had a it's totally you know, different I thing in my mind. Left the paper on the back of this. Uh huh. And I just I pulled up enough paper so I can do my cut line because I like to cut it on top of my background. Okay. And just laid the paper back down, and I mean it's fine. But I have zero puckering this time, which I'm extremely happy with. Good, good. I'm glad for your outcome, Barb. Thank yeah. you for sharing so, that. I'm glad I have two packages of fuse and fix. <laughs> So yeah. we put that on all the on the fabric that we're using to create the flowers. It's not used as a stabilizer for the background. No, no. I have it no. on each of my pieces that I use for this. With for your flowers and stuff. Just on the applique fabric. Just on the applique pieces. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, I have a question. I um I did a a sample block. I don't know if you can see that. And where are you? Who are is who am I talking to? Judy. This is Judy. <laughs> Judy, let me find you, Judy. Okay. There you are. But oh, that's very pretty. Yeah, thank you. But that was just a sample block. But I ended up breaking four needles doing that. So I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> I would like some pointers on what that. Needle are you do what needle do you have in? I have First a Schmitz 7511, the gold embroidery needle. Okay, that should have been fine. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. Um, I... It seemed like it might have hit knots at one place or another that it broke, but other times um, it didn't. I don't know what's going on. So do you have any could insight? There, could there be um, little spurs on, this, on the thread going through? Yeah, I did. Yeah, could be. I don't know. Um, did you slow down the speed? Me. Yeah, um, I don't do I don't do it real fast. I don't have it on super fast when I go. I don't push the rabbit and do that. So. I usually have mine right in the middle. I, yeah, my, so I, yeah, my speed too. My yeah, speed control is kind of in the middle range. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not in a hurry. I mean, yeah, I'm not speed sewing here. Um, I I'm use just thinking about all the things that I do. Um, yeah, you could. Go to a larger needle, try a 80 or a 90. Um, uh, Are there other types of needles? Slow it down, that... change your needle. Yeah. I am like an organ needle. Um, my yeah. preferred needle is an organ, but These organ. Are the Schmetz needles are good needles. There's no problem with Schmetz needle. Um, these, are, these are the ones I use. So organ embroidery. I, you like those better? Yeah, that's the only one I use for embroidery. I might have to go get some of those. They, they last twice as long. They're okay. more expensive, but they last twice as long. Well, you can yeah, get a okay. good 10 hours out of an organ needle. But okay. there's 10 so, in a pack instead of five also. You get 10 okay. needles in a pack. What size are those? Um, 80s. I think they're 80s. at 80. Yeah. Okay. That's what I use. I I think think you know. an 80 or a 90. Okay. Um, I had a thought in my head that I wanted you to try, but I think it went away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I, I don't understand oh. that. 
The other thing that I want people to do is that I'm asking you to do this is to remove everything off of your USB that you are putting in your machine, except your EXP files. Okay. There's a reason for it. And I'm, this is not a single occurrence now. Um, Joy Lynn had um, needle drag. Okay, the needle drug across her project and ripped it three times oh. Oh, wow. on three different blocks. And it's called needle drag is what it's called. And I just had this happen to me as well oh. on another project I was working on. The needle drug across and ripped my fabric yeah. twice. The first time I thought it was some kind of fluke. So this could also be an issue for you. Okay. Judy. Okay, I, I'll... I'll check that. It could be needle drag breaking your needle. Okay. Yeah. So pull yeah. everything off of that USB except your EXP files. If you're burning a person, have okay. the files that you need on there. Not, I don't know. I don't know if anybody else here is not Bernina, but I'm not. I'm um, biking. OESD. I'm I'm, I'm BP, OESD. BP3. I was talking to them. Yeah. So save your files that you need on your machine only. Okay. 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 Um, everything else you can get from that disk and print off. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You don't need that on your USB. Yeah. It's, it's true. Okay. It's clogging up your USB. Um, you could inadvertently grab the wrong file and use it and get needle oh. drag. Um, okay. I talked to OESD about my project that I was doing and that was their theory as well as what we found was that um, those other files, the files were getting corrupted. Ooh, hmm, okay. That's interesting. So yeah. Less on your USB okay. is better. I didn't have an issue after I did that. After I, I took that off, no issues. So I have to think they're right, you know? I have to go with the expert, right? I mean, I'm I know a good bit, but I'm not an expert. I'm still learning every day. I learn about new products and I share what I learn as I go. You know, if you choose to use the the products I'm telling you about as I'm learning about them, that's you know up to you. I think at some point you should try all the things, you know, because it's a learning experience. We're learning and and finding new things. Um, can can you repeat so, the needle size, the organ needle size that you recommend to use? I I use eighties. Okay, eighties on projects like this. I use an eighty. Is it that one? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I don't know where my needles are right now. Let's see. And there's nothing that says that you can't use other needles in your embroidery machine, too. I was watching um, Sylvain, and he, he was going through his recommended needles. And he uses many different types of needles when he's embroidering. It just depends on the project. You can use a, a non-stick needle when you're working on, on stuff. I use the 80 20 a lot of times when I'm doing that. You know, if I'm working on anything with stickiness, um, and that's that um theme seam could be um coming through as a sticky product. Yeah, I don't know where I put my organ needles. <laughs> I'll be looking for them hard later. Probably in your bag. I was just wanting to double check. Yeah. Check your running with scissors. Big. I don't want to... Yeah, they're probably where they're supposed to be. 
Yeah. Would I be that organized? Yeah, this package is a 7511 and a 9014. But I'm kind of feeling I didn't use a 75. That doesn't sound like me. Mine are the 8012 sharps. But I cleaned my craft room. That's what mine this are, is what too. Happened. What was yeah. your first? 8012 yeah. sharps. 8012 sharps. Yeah. All gone. I know that's what it was. I knew it wasn't a 75. I think this came with my machine. My 75s. I do find that a different machines like different needles too. So you kind of find out what your machine likes too. Because I'll use a gold embroidery Schmetz. You know, I have those in my wheelhouse. I use those too. Anything else? On these little to circles, stop the report. I'm just going to stop the recording. Okay.